those who journeyed across the nation to forge new lives in the untamed expanses of the Wild West, were renowned for their ingenuity, a trait that manifested in their culinary choices. While the cuisine of the pioneers might strike us as unfamiliar today, these settlers were compelled to make do with what little they had in order to endure, and their innovations were remarkable. Survival in the Old West was unforgiving, with arduous expeditions and no assurance that provisions carried on wagon trains would suffice until reaching their destination. They relied on local game for sustenance, substituted ingredients that could withstand the journey, such as apple cider vinegar for pie-making, and diligently preserved whatever they could. Waste was a luxury they couldn't afford. Hence, they utilized every part of the animals they slaughtered a practice exemplified by dishes like head cheese. It's possible they concluded their meals with a sip of scamper juice, a term among the vivid slang of the Wild West. Much of what cowhands consumed was born of necessity rather than preference, yet perhaps indulging in a cup of calf's foot jelly or a plate of roasted squirrel offered a rare culinary delight. History of Cowboys the emergence of the cowboy paralleled the establishment of a ranching economy in the Americas, a sector deeply rooted in colonial history. Spanish colonizers introduced cattle to the New World aboard some of the earliest transatlantic vessels, with cattle husbandry thriving notably in the Southwest, encompassing regions of Mexico and Texas, where vaqueros held sway. Texas emerged as a focal point for the burgeoning cattle industry, Although before the Civil War, cattle were primarily raised for their hides and fat rather than their meat. Their hides provided valuable leather, a versatile material, while their fat, when rendered into tallow, proved even more versatile, serving various purposes including cooking, soap making, and candle production, an essential commodity in an era predating widespread electricity. The expansion of railroad networks concurrent with the Civil War era facilitated the efficient distribution of meat, meeting the escalating demand and the vast expanses of the American West, with their extensive ranges and open prairies, offered ideal conditions for cattle husbandry. This convergence of innovation and consumption in the mid-19th century laid the foundation for the cowboy's pivotal role in the American economy and the subsequent westward expansion. The cook made the team. Perhaps reflecting the rugged and spirited nature of cowboys, they bestowed numerous respectful titles upon the cook who completed their team. While cookie was a common moniker, Dr. Slatta, an authority on cowboy culture, suggests that the lexicon of the cowboy was rich with more imaginative titles for cooks, including bean master, pot rustler, biscuit shooter, dough puncher, grub slinger, and koozie, derived from the Spanish word cocinero, for cook. Cooks received the admiration of cowboys thanks to their hearty and nutritious meals. They rose earliest to prepare breakfast and remained tirelessly on duty, promptly moving to set up the kitchen for the next meal after finishing one. In the cowboy vernacular, dinner referred to lunchtime, while supper was served in the evening. Despite the culinary challenges of creating diverse meals with limited resources, cooks on the trail wore many hats beyond that of a mere chef. They carried first aid supplies in the chuck wagon, often fulfilling the roles of doctor or veterinarian when the need arose. Given their pivotal role in sustaining the cattle crew, the position of cook held significant esteem and influence, reflected in their higher pay compared to cowboys. A skilled cook could elevate the success of a cattle drive, whereas a subpar cook could deter cowboys from joining a particular ranch. Chuck wagon. In the early stages of Western development, cowhands subsisted on provisions they could carry in their saddlebags or procure while on the move. However, as the demand for beef surged alongside the influx of settlers pursuing gold and the notion of manifest destiny, the modest crews that once tended to cattle evolved into large-scale enterprises to meet the needs of a rapidly expanding market. The primary duty of cowboys, as their name implies, 
was to drive and manage cattle, a demanding and often thankless task involving herding sizable herds on lengthy drives from remote ranches to centralized markets, auction houses, or railway depots for sale and shipment. Trekking through vast expanses of untamed wilderness, they had no choice but to rest and dine beneath the open sky. Although devoid of the romanticized allure associated with the Old West, overnight camping took on a semblance of domesticity with the advent of the chuck wagon. Credited to Charles Goodnight, this mobile kitchen and pantry was fashioned from a refurbished army supply wagon that trailed alongside the cowhands during cattle drives. Outfitted with sturdy cast iron pots, pans, and Dutch ovens, and drawn by a team of up to six oxen, the chukwagon may have been cumbersome, but it facilitated the preparation of fresh, hot meals. This departure from preserved rations marked a significant improvement in the quality of sustenance available to cowboys. Gathering together for communal meals amid the elements, cowhands found solace in shared camaraderie and the hearty fare provided by the chukwagon, fostering a more contented workforce. Coffee Coffee was an indispensable staple in the daily life of the western frontier, yet brewing a simple cup while on the trail posed a considerable challenge due to the need to preserve green coffee beans for long journeys. Before the advent of two innovative entrepreneurs preparing coffee, meat roasting, and grinding beans on the spot. However, the efforts of James A. Folger, who dominated the market among gold miners along the western coast, and John Arbuckleur, whose brand revolutionized coffee on the frontier, changed the game. Arbuckle's breakthrough in preserving coffee beans involved coating them with a mixture of sugar, eggs, and Irish moss during roasting, imparting a distinct flavor that propelled his blend to unparalleled popularity, to the extent that his name became synonymous with coffee itself. Coffee wasn't just a beverage for cow hands. It was an essential tool in their arsenal, providing a much-needed boost for the demanding tasks of early mornings, grueling days, and frequent all-night shifts. Prior to the introduction of chuck wagons, many cowboys carried a coffee pot in their saddlebags. However, with the inclusion of cooks on the cattle trail, coffee became a constant presence, simmering in large five-gallon pots. According to historical data, Cowboys preferred their coffee so potent that it could float a horseshoe, often opting to drink it black and without any adornments. To ensure maximum strength, cooks continually added fresh grounds to the brew until the pot reached its capacity. As noted in the writings of one cook, Oliver Nelson, coffee was a lifeline for cowboys during night watches and inclement weather, helping them stay alert and vigilant. Common breads. Sourdough served as the preferred bread for trail outfits, equipped with a chuck wagon and a cook, willing to dedicate early mornings to the sourdough starter. According to Bread and Basil, this starter, crafted from a blend of water and flour left to ferment, fosters the growth of lactic acid bacteria and wild yeast, resulting in a natural yeast culture with versatile applications as a leavening agent for various breads. Once matured, the starter is combined with the appropriate proportions of water and flour to form dough, offering a portable means of baking bread on the trail, albeit requiring regular maintenance. Sourdough also lent its distinct tang to biscuits and flapjacks prepared in Dutch ovens and skillets, adding an appetizing twist to cowboy baked goods. However, another prevalent but decidedly less appealing bread option in cowboys' diets was hard tack also known as hot rocks. These biscuits, composed of flour, water, and salt, were baked until devoid of moisture, resulting in a durable product with an extensive shelf life, remaining edible for months, if not years. Yet their hardness rendered consumption challenging without the assistance of milk, water, or coffee to soften them. Despite originating from the military rations of soldiers and sailors predating the American West, Cowboy cooks found a novel use for hardtack as a thickening agent in stews, perhaps offering the most palatable rendition of this enduring provision. Fresh meat. Round-the-clock cattle drives meant that beef served as a reliable food source for cowhands, with a fresh steak or roast, 
providing a welcome indulgence for trailside suppers. However, the consumption of fresh meat depended on having a sufficient number of workers and resources to utilize the entire animal. As recounted by Dr. Slata, one cowboy acknowledged that their smaller crucis and the large size of their animals made it impractical to sustain themselves solely on fresh meat, particularly given the sweltering heat that would cause it to spoil quickly. Another saying among frugal ranchers echoed the sentiment, only a fool eats his own beef. Hence, preserved beef was a more common dietary staple as meat would quickly spoil in the absence of refrigeration. Beef jerky emerged as a popular option due to its extended shelf life, providing a convenient source of protein that could be enjoyed on its own or incorporated into stews to add texture and flavor to Dutch oven concoctions. In addition to beef, cowboys had ample opportunities to hunt for other game on the range, introducing variety to their diet. While deer and buffalo were occasionally encountered, smaller animals such as hares and possums were also fair game, either cooked into stews or enjoyed as standalone dishes. Rocky Mountain Oysters Calf fries, a unique delicacy, were available only during a specific time of the year. Known by various playful aliases, such as Rocky Mountain Oysters or Prairie Oysters, they were harvested in the spring during the calf castration process. Castration served the dual purpose of managing the cattle population and improving the tenderness of beef while ensuring the docility of the animals. The testicles left over from this procedure exemplified the cowboy ethos of utilizing every part of the animal, leaving nothing to waste. Despite the novelty of consuming this particular protein, cowhands believed that indulging in calf fries from a healthy animal would confer good health upon the eater even suggesting aphrodisiac properties. Though its nutritional benefits may be debatable, calf fries remain a cherished tradition, evolving from their historical preparation over coals in the Old West to contemporary methods such as barbecuing or deep frying, often accompanied by a dipping sauce. Salt, pork, and bacon. In times when beef was scarce, pork emerged as the primary meat source in cowboy diets a trend exacerbated by the Civil War's impact on beef availability. Pork, with its versatility for preservation, took various forms, with sow belly being the most prevalent. Also referred to as salt pork, sow belly derived its name from the part of the pig it originated from and could endure prolonged preservation through the salting process. This method involved layering the meat with salt for immediate conservation although it necessitated an extended soaking period to remove excess salt before consumption. An alternative preservation technique involved soaking the meat in a brine-filled barrel, ensuring both preservation and tenderness. Once prepared, salt pork became a favored breakfast meat among cowhands. Another pork variation, overland trout, colloquially referred to thinly sliced bacon, drawing from Old West terminology for pigs and hogs, despitey differences from traditional pork belly and its lesser prevalence compared to salt pork, overland trout's rich fat content made it a satisfying addition to cowboy fare, embodying the hearty essence of cowboy cuisine, canned goods. Historians highlight another culinary addition to the cowboy diet introduced by the chuck wagon, air tights the cowboy term for canned goods, which introduced a welcome variety to their meals. Canned products, including peaches, tomatoes, corn, and milk, represented a relatively recent innovation during the era of the Old West, originating overseas in the early 19th century to provide military units with more diverse sustenance than jerky and hardtack. Despite the lack of can openers, air tights were prized for the options they offered on the trail with their durable metal containers making them worth the effort of opening with a hammer and knife. Canned goods allowed cowboys to enjoy nearly fresh fruit alongside the dried varieties that were otherwise their only access to fruit, whether eaten on their own or incorporated into desserts, a rare indulgence in the wilderness. Beyond the common dreed aples and prunies, 
Caned fruits provided nutritional benefits tailor-read to trailside living, with the acidity of caned tomatoes proving particularly effective in combating deuced inhalation. Beans. While ranch-working cowhands might incorporate more potatoes into their diets, whistleberries, one of the many colloquial terms for beans, stood as the primary vegetable on the cattle trail, constituting the bulk of their meals. Author Natalie Bright recounts trail driver Lee D. Leverett's description of this quintessential cowboy fare, noting that beans were a staple ingredient for virtually every meal, beans often referred to as frioles or Mexican strawberries, reflected the influence of Mexican cuisine on cowboy cooking. Dried beans proved ideal for transportation, boasting natural preservation qualities and resilience to the harsh conditions of the trail. With their filling nature, versatility, fiber content, and protein richness, beans emerged as a cornerstone of the cowboy diet, featuring prominently in various dishes. They could be easily cooked overnight in a Dutch oven and added substantial heartiness to soups and stews. To enhance their flavor, cowboys often infused molasses into the cooking water, a precursor to the creation of baked beans, one among numerous dishes originating from the Wild West era. Corn meal. While the portrayal of cowboy interactions with Native Americans in Hollywood westerns may exaggerate reality, cowhands did benefit from indigenous culinary techniques refined over generations of living off the land. Corn meal, derived from dried and ground corn, was one such ingredient adopted from Native American cuisine offering a practical addition to chuck wagon provisions. Resilient and easily transportable, cornmeal lent itself to various culinary applications with minimal preparation. Chuck wagon cooks utilized cornmeal to thicken stews, but its true potential shone in baking. By simply combining it with water and salt, cornmeal transformed into a versatile dough suitable for crafting biscuits or flat cakes, and with some finesse in a cast iron skillet, could be baked into savory cornbread. As a wholesome accompaniment, its subtly sweet flavor complemented the robust and spicy flavors of Dutch oven stews, potentially establishing cowboy culture as the birthplace of the iconic chili and cornbread pairing that has since become an enduring American tradition. Dutch oven delights. While beans often form the backbone of cowboy soups and stews, chuck wagon cooks showcase their culinary prowess with Dutch ovens and chili emerged as a beloved favorite among cowhands. Rooted in Aztec folklore and tales of mystical origins, chili's precise beginnings in the American Southwest remain shrouded in myth and intrigue. Cowboys likely concocted it as a practical solution to utilizing their abundant supply of meat and beans. Despite its alternative moniker, chili con carne, there is scant evidence to support claims of its Mexican origins. Nevertheless, another meat-centric stew draws direct inspiration from Mexican cuisine. Son of a Gun Stew, a cowboy adaptation of the traditional Mexican menudo, reflects the resourcefulness of frontier cooking by utilizing every part of the cow. Described by Dr. Slada through Ramon F. Adams' account, this stew incorporates a medley of offal including tripe, tongue, liver, and marrow, resulting in a distinctive flavor profile. Legend even suggests that this unique concoction doubles as a tried-and-true hangover remedy, adding to its allure among cowhands. While Hollywood may have romanticized the cowboy way of life, the reality of what cowboys ate in the Old West was a testament to their resilience, resourcefulness, and adaptability. From hearty stews simmered over open flames to simple yet satisfying meals crafted from pantry staples, Cowboy cuisine reflects a unique blend of practicality and flavor born out of necessity on the frontier. If you want to learn more about the fascinating history of cowboy culture and cuisine, subscribe to our channel for regular updates and insights into the untold stories of the American West. Don't miss out on discovering the rich heritage and culinary traditions of the cowboys who shaped the Old West. Subscribe now and join us on a journey through time and taste.